Welcome to Bookmarks from Christian Heritage London with your host, Dr. Kenneth Brownell. Well, I'm Ken Brownell, and I'm here at the Evangelical Ministry Assembly at the Emmanuel Centre in Westminster in London. And I'm meeting with Conrad McBoy. I hope I pronounced your name properly. (laughs) Bewe. Bewe. Okay. Bewe. Bewe. (laughs) Right. I'll I'll get there someday. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that, Conrad. And we've just heard you speaking and preaching on uh, 1, Corinthians, uh, two, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, yeah. on the power of the gospel. It was, it was uh, great. So welcome to, to London. Just tell us, Connor, a little bit about yourself, uh, your ministry, where yeah. you're from. Yes, I'm from Lusaka, Zambia, and I pastor Kabwata Baptist Church yeah. uh, in that capital city. Um, I trained earlier as a mining engineer, worked very briefly for three years in the mining industry. Yeah and then uh, was called to pastor this church. Um, I also uh, am involved as Dean of the Theological Faculty of the African Christian University. So that takes up quite a bit of my time because of uh, the fact that it's a new university, so there's a lot that we need to do there. Um, yeah, I think that's generally me. I'm married. Uh, Felicitas is my wife. We've got uh, six children, though one recently went to glory, um, and uh, nine grandchildren. Okay. And uh, just tell us a little bit about the African Christian University as, uh, as a new venture. Uh, that's quite an exciting uh, development. Yes, yes. In the year 2009, our churches in the capital city, Lusaka, came together, uh, the Reformed Baptist churches. Yeah to begin uh, the African Christian University. It began and still has four uh, faculties, um, or four schools. We have agriculture, business, education, and theology. And uh, currently we have about 120 students that are going through the different uh, schools. Um, We opened those finally in 2017 so the Lord willing in the next two to three years would have clocked 10 years in actual teaching yeah. of, uh, of students. And um, yeah, the, the, the main goal is to, to take our discipleship work in the church into the community seven days a week yeah. by especially impacting the young people. Yeah. So that's really what we're doing. So we, we really are there for the Christian young people in our churches, though we don't, we don't close the door off to somebody who knows that they're coming into a Christian context and they themselves may not yet be Christians. Yeah, well, that's really uh, exciting, particularly as you were saying earlier about how God is working so much in Africa, so much, so important to that sort of Christian worldview and yes. everything. And we need that back here too, actually. <laughs> but that's another story. Anyway, the, the big question I ask uh, those I'm interviewing is what book, other than the Bible, has had the most influence on your life and ministry? If you can choose yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, I normally struggle between three books. So I'll just mention the three and then try and delve into one. Um, and all the three were impactful during the formative years Mm -hmm. of my Christian life. One was Lewis Berkhoff's Systematic Theology. Mm -hmm. Um, The other was Arnold Dalimo's biography of George Whitfield. And then the third was um, Ian Murray's The Forgotten Mm Spurgeon. I will, of these three, primarily pick the last one, uh, Ian Murray's uh, biography of Spurgeon. The, the, the main way in which that book impacted me was that the thesis was something like this, that everybody, well, a lot of people know about Spurgeon, but they know him primarily as a kind of popular preacher um, of a century or so ago. Uh, what they do not seem to realize was his reformed convictions. Yeah. Uh, that he was willing to to die for the doctrines of grace, mm-hmm. that he he fought for them uh, to the point where it broke his health. And I remember 
as I was reading that book, I, I had not read much about Spurgeon. So the first half of the thesis that a lot of people know about him was not true about me. But it was the second part of him not simply preaching a popular watered down gospel, but preaching the full orbed truths of the Bible that really impacted me. I remember thinking to myself that this is what I want to be. Mm -hmm. That I, I, I would like to be a preacher of convictions. Mm -hmm. A preacher who will fight for the truth. Mm -hmm. Not just for the one, two, three truths that sort of hang right at the top, but for the, the gospel in all its breadth, length, depth, and height. Uh, yes, there will be other areas where we'll differ with other believers, and I'll say, fine, let's continue. I will speak about those differences, but there will not be a hill to die on. Mm -hmm. However, with respect to the gospel, yeah. um, as God has revealed it, you know, uh, by grace, uh, through faith, uh, Christ alone, and uh, uh, again through the Bible, and finally uh, to the glory of God alone, that those realities yeah. should should permeate mm. my ministry uh, w with such um, clarity yeah. that it will have its its impact. And one of the statements that is in that book that I also uh, found challenging or helpful, maybe let me use that phrase, was when Spurgeon said uh, something about the fact that I'm willing to be eaten by dogs for the next 50 years or so, but the more distant future will vindicate me. Mm -hmm. Which, as I was sitting there reading, I realized, yes, the more distant future has vindicated him. Yes. And it came to me as a great encouragement that though I may be a lone voice yeah. uh, at that moment, um, the truths, because they are God's truths, will continue impacting people. I'm merely a voice. Yeah. And in due season, the Spirit will, as it were, ignite uh, those truths, or at least ignite human hearts with those truths, yeah. and then it will spread. Yeah. So, of the three, I just want to, to specifically highlight that. In those days, I think Ban of Truth was probably the only mm. publisher that was getting these books out. But thankfully now, you have a lot more publishers yeah. who are coming through the ranks. So, the, such books should be available yeah. through more publishers. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things you see in church history. Some of the most significant people, their influence is generations on. You think of Gresham Machen, um, mm -hmm. you think of Martin Lloyd Jones, you think of uh, Francis Schaeffer, all these people, you know, in many ways, it's decades on that the full impact of what they stood for their, in their time comes fresh and Spurgeon, very much the same. So I think it's a very, very encouraging. And just in the Zambian context, I mean, you were one of, I think, if I believe, a, a group of students at that time at university reading these books. So it, I think it's a great encouragement to get books into the right hands for the sake of the gospel. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's, uh, you know, you don't realize it when you are an individual reading. You don't realize that the, the, the blessing of books is that somebody else is also reading and someone else is reading and they are reading beyond the time of the author and yeah. in a totally different space yeah. and then when you get together and you discover wow you've stumbled across these truths you want to as it were uh, capture the world yeah. with those same truths yeah. and that's basically what happened we were young students and coming across these truths through so these books and uh, yeah, wanting now to to be true to those truths yeah. for the rest of our lives. Yeah, yeah that's great. Okay, uh, well, just finally, uh, what book are you reading right now that you might want other people to to read? Yeah, the the book that I'm currently going through, I'm I'm going through it with my wife, mm -hmm. is um, by Tim Chalice, and it's a book uh, that he wrote when he lost his own son mm. um, a few years ago. Um, come on, the, the title escapes me now. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will come to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll quickly um, pull it out. So uh, it's it's a book that he wrote over a period of uh, one year, mm -hmm. and it, it, it compiles the the books that rather the the articles he was writing through the four seasons of life. In yeah. fact, it's seasons of sorrow. That's, That's the right. title. Um, and it's, um, it's one that uh, in the earlier chapters is, is dealing with the, the earlier days of the loss. Mm. And then as the year sort of gets to an end, you can sense the movement. And the reason why we, my wife and I, are reading it is primarily because of uh, our own loss of a son. Mm. And um, so it's, uh, it, it's been a great help. We, we, we read it, we discuss it mm. with my wife, we pray over it, we particularly go to those scriptures that he quotes as his, his, uh, his reading. Uh, it's definitely a book that I'd like to recommend to to anybody going through such a period because he's not writing as a counselor to somebody mm -hmm. else. Yeah, he's writing as somebody who's walking in the sorrow. Yeah, and you can quite identify, yes. especially not just with his experience but his experience of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Well, thank you very much, Conrad, and uh, thank you again for your ministry here at the uh, EMA. And may the Lord continue to bless you, both back in Zambia and around the world, as you, thank you. serve him. Thank, thank you, you for having me. For more episodes of the Christian Heritage London podcast, and for information on Christian Heritage London events, tours, and walks, please go to christianheritagelondon.org.